Hi, this is Chris Kepler with Does This Happen to You? The weekly podcast where we explore our daily anomalies, bringing to life short stories by fantastic writers never heard in audio format. A weekly mini audio book about life and befuddlement just for you. This week we have a double header by Marianne Curran, who you'll find on Medium.com and on Blogspot. And here is, My Husband Rinses His Ham. My Husband Rinses His Ham. It all began in our kitchen a few years ago, while Bob and I were having a mindless chat about, oh, let's say my obsession with Amazon Prime. Why did you buy 14 pairs of shoes at a time? he asked. I'm only keeping a couple of them. What's the big deal? Marianne, the big deal is that you blow up our credit card, and even though you only keep a couple of them, the other dozen sit on our bill until you muster the strength to pack them up and take them to the UPS store. Come on, Bob, think about how much money I save us when I get a refund for the shoes I've returned. Somewhere in the midst of my completely illogical defense that I make money by returning shoes, the doorbell rang. Hoo! Amazon Prime! I squealed as I ran to the front door. When I popped back into the kitchen, Bob had obviously started making himself lunch. I knew because he had his favorite fixings lined up. Sandwich slims, pepper rings, spicy mustard, lettuce and toasted bread assembled in an anal retentive protocol usually reserved for the coronation of a king. What was missing was the meat. That's when I noticed Bob was at the sink holding several slices of deli ham under the faucet. What are you doing? I ask. Rinsing the ham. I see that, but why? Why are you rinsing your ham? Because it's slimy. Oh my God, Bob, you can't eat that. It's gone bad. Throw it out. No way. I rinsed it. It's fine. I do this all the time, he said as he popped a slice into his mouth. He rinsed off a couple more putrid slices and stacked them on his sandwich. As he took a giant bite, I stared, waiting for him to convulse, wretch, go pale, something. Hell, if he didn't, I was certainly going to barf. Not taking any chances, I called 911. My husband just poisoned himself with a ham sandwich. Stay calm, ma'am. Can you tell me how old the ham is? I don't know. Ten days? Maybe two weeks? Please, you have to hurry. Do you know if it was slimy when he ate it? Yes. Yes, it was slimy. Viscous, actually. Is he going to die? He could get sick depending on how much ham he ate and whether or not he rinsed it first. What? Rinsed it? Yes, he did, but wait. Is that a thing? Who the hell rinses their ham? I do it all the time. Drives my wife crazy. Look, I suggest you calm down and keep an eye on him. He should be fine. If not, call us back. Bob survived, this time. Then one day, while chatting with our friends Craig and Mika, I asked if they had viscous ham issues. Mika rolled her eyes. Craig's like Bob, eats anything, just like a frat boy. Hey, Craig protested, there's nothing wrong with the ham. I just give it a quick rinse. But hey, if it's really gone bad, you know, BBG bad, as Mika calls it, I'll chuck it. BBG bad? I ask. That's Mika's term for something so foul, even Bob won't eat it. BBG, beyond Bob going. That's when I gave up trying to save Bob's life and promised myself I would never again prevent a man from rinsing his ham. And our second story from Marianne, I'm too loud for golf. Bob and I are thinking of retiring sooner than later in, despite the obvious cliché, Florida. When I told my gal pals, there was a collective gasp. You can't be serious. You're not that old yet. What about your skin? 
don't you have to be a meth head to live in Florida? Or Jewish? I laughed off the hysterics until Sherry offered her two cents. Marianne, you can't move to Florida. You don't golf. How about tennis? You're way past the legal limit of cortisone shots, Sherry shot back. Volleyball? Face it, your spine is shrinking. How do you plan to get the ball over the net? Next. Zumba? Good luck finding a sports bra that'll hold those puppies up through that crap. Then what's left? Chair yoga? Mahjong with the widows at the deli? By the way, why is it that all Jewish deli food is beige or gray? Sherry got that sherry look in her eye. Bob's got a birthday coming up, right? What's that got to do with Florida? You're buying yourself golf lessons for Bob's birthday. You've got a few months to take them. Then, on his birthday, you take him golfing and show him you're ready for the sunshine state. The notion seemed faintly romantic until I remembered when I met Bob's brother-in-law for the first time, and he asked, do you golf? Before I could answer, Bob chimed in. No. No, she doesn't. This was going to be a tough task. By the time Bob's birthday rolled around, I was ready for an easy round of nine holes. Didn't want to over-impress him after all. Imagine his surprise when his surprise birthday gift was a round of golf with me. That was a fun moment. But he was a trooper and off we went to the links. With each successful whack of the ball, I let out an excited whoop whoop or did a dab or two. I was only six over par on that hole. Whoop whoop. Is that still a bogey? No, Marianne, Bob groaned, leaning on his club. There's no term for being six over par other than being six over par. And can you keep it down with a whoop whoops? This is golf, not beer pong. But I'm having so much fun. Jeez, not like those guys behind us. They look miserable. Hey, guys, watch me birdie this next shot. I yelled to them and waved. They just sat in their carts and stared. What's their problem? I asked Bob. Oh, I don't know. Maybe they'd like you to take less than 30 minutes to finish a hole so they can get back to the clubhouse before the next presidential election. Bob didn't seem to be having as much fun as I was, but I wasn't going to let that ruin how much I was enjoying his birthday present. Four hours later, we finished the ninth hole. I was exhausted but exhilarated. I shouted one more whoop whoop to celebrate. I was now a golfer and could officially move to Florida. So, Bobaloo, how'd you like your birthday present? It was a very sweet idea. Torturous, but sweet. Oh, come on. By the time we move to Sarasota, I'll be much better, I promise. I'm sure you will, but I won't be golfing with you. He sighed when he saw my disappointment and then said, Marianne, I love you and you know that, but I have to tell you the truth, you're too loud for golf. The carts with a foursome who were behind us rolled by overhearing Bob. They looked right at me with their first smile of the day and together said, Yes, yes she is and then let out a loud whoop whoop. One of them even dabbed. Mahjong at the deli it is. Pass the pastrami. Thanks so much for listening. If you like this story or my podcast, please share and let me know. And if you want to hear multiple stories like this multiple times per week, please become my podcast patron. Just click the link on my Podbean page.